What's up YouTube, Team Deception here, bringing you guys a deck profile on um, something I don't think I've done in quite a while. Um, I'm kind of hoping you guys like it because it's kind of more along the lines of a fun deck. Um, I've playtested with it a little bit though, and it's actually worked rather well. Um, there are a few things that I would change about it, but I'm lacking a few cards, as well as a few other things that I'd like to implement with it or whatever. Um, but yeah, I'll just get into it. Um, so yeah, it's a Lancer Frog kind of thing. So first up, we have Triple Lancer. Uh, it's kind of you know one of the main points of this deck. You add your because uh, you remove your frogs with uh, Ron and Toten, and I do it quite often. So it's great for putting things like Poison Draw Frog and Dupe Frog on it, so that whenever they are destroyed while equipped to him, they get their effects, and he gets a thousand for each thing that's equipped to him. Um, up next, as I just showed you, is Ronin Toten. Um, you remove a frog, summon it back from the grave, it's a level 2, so you can go into Gachi Gachi, um, which is just great. It's great for putting up a, a very solid wall, and you already have plenty of those in this deck. With Ronin being 2000, you have Dupe being 2000, and stuff like that, so it's just great to have. It's also a main part of this deck. So, next up is another main part of this deck. Uh, pretty much all the monsters are, you know, what make this deck anyways. But, uh, yeah, you, it's basically your Dark Reffer for the deck. Uh, you discard a water to special summon it. And whenever it's summoned by any way, you can discard a, you know, an Aqua from your deck. So, up next we have Triple Poison Draw Frog. Um, I run three just because I need the frogs for, uh, removing from play and stuff. Plus I run creature swaps in here, so it's great for just swapping over, drawing a card, and all that other happy crap. Next we have three Duke Frog, your Death Frog for the deck, pretty much. Um, he searches out your Swap Frog or any other frog if you already have your Swap that you, to the point where you don't actually need Swap Frog. But uh, he's great for searching out your Swap Frog when you actually need him. Um, he's also great for another card that I'll be explaining later down the line. And it's also it works with you know, the Sea Lancer whenever it's equipped to it, so it's a really good card to have in here. Um, up next, I have two flip flops. Um, it's great for just setting. Whenever they attack, it flips. They return cards equal to the number of frogs I have. Um, it's another card I can use for Ron and Toten, and it's, it's just there. So the same kind of goes for the next one, uh, Unifrog. Basically, it's a frog target for Ron and Toten, and um, I can also d dump it for Swap Frog if I want to, or I can attack directly if I have another frog out. Um, they lose one of their back row, which is also a pretty, you know, good thing to have. The last monster, and this is the one I wanted to kind of explain, was uh, Debris Dragon. Um, with Swap Frog, you tend to special summon it quite a lot. So you can special summon it, um, dump something from your deck. It could be a Dupe Frog or a any frog, really, it's, as long as it's not a Ron and Toten. And summon this, bring it back, the one that you just dumped, then synchro for a level 8, and you still have frogs in your grave. Um... Like if, like, okay, let's say you have this Swap Frog and something like Dupe Frog in your hand. You discard that Dupe Frog, send Ron and Toad into the grave. Then you normal summon this, you bring back that Dupe Frog that you discarded from your hand or whatever. You use uh, Debris Dragon with the Dupe Frog and the Swap Frog for a level 8, and then you can bring back Ron and Toad and, you know, and all that other happy shit. That's the reason why I use this. Um, like I said, this is my last monster in here. Um, I don't have any Treeborn Frogs. I need at least two, if you guys have them. I prefer rares. Uh, just figured I'd get that, you know, point that, you know, get that out there and all that. Anyway, spells, we have Triple Salvage. I can't, I can't begin to tell you how good this card is in this deck. Um, just discarding, 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 and then setting up your, uh, your Lancer to go all out. It also recycles your Lancers from your graveyard and stuff, so it's just really good to, you know, it's kind of a must in this deck. Um, triple Creature Swaps. Basically, it's just to swap over your weaker monsters or the ones that get effects when they are sent to the graveyard, like your Poison Draw Frog and your, uh, and your Dupe Frog. Basically, it's just for that, but you can also just swap over a weakling like Unifrog or something. It's also really good with your uh, with your flip-flop. You can return monsters that you don't want to take from them back to their hand, then creature swap over any monster you want and take whatever monster you actually wanted from them. That's part of the reason why I really like using the flip-flop in this deck. 
next. Uh, this would be more useful if I had the Treeborns, but it's still rather good for being defensive as well as taking their monsters and attacking them or whatever. Like if I take one of their tuners, I can synchro, or I can use their monster for an exceed or something like that. You know, it's just something like that. But if I had Treeborns, it would be even better. Um, so you know, it's just that it's econ. It's something good to use for frogs. Um, staple dark hole. Uh, this is kind of a weird choice, but I find it very useful for um, unclogging those dead hands that I get sometimes. Uh, card destruction. Like if I open no swap frog and I open a bunch of frogs or something, this is a great way of discarding them. Um, if I don't have a way of discarding something like Mon and Toten or something, and I need it in the graveyard now, this is a great card to you know. And it's not like I'm going to run into Dark World very often. Staple. Um, staple. And, again, this card would be a little better if I had freaking Treeborn in here. Uh, Foolish. It still is very good for setting up Ron and Toad and plays and stuff. Like, if I need to, you know, put it in the graveyard now, it's there. Or if I need to fuel my Ron and Toad with some kind of, you know, like if I need a frog or something. Um, up next, and this is actually a very live card, like, I can't begin to tell you how often I remove from play with this deck. So, uh, double O-Fish, um, Ron and Toten just immediately sets this up, and you remove all, from play a lot of stuff. It's great for recycling frogs back into the deck, too, because sometimes you don't have any targets to send from your deck to the grave for Swat Frog. I can't begin to tell you how often I actually run out of targets to send from my deck. Um because I tend to do salvage, 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 and stuff like that, and it just goes through it very, very fast. Um, O-Fish recycles them back into the deck. It also can negate things that are a major threat, like Trishul or whatever. You can also negate things like uh, Tour Guide, Tengu, etc., etc. It's really good to have. It's kind of like a War Chariot. Um, I don't want warnings in here, partly because of the life point cost. Um, sometimes this deck just can't really defend itself as well as, you know, a lot of others. Plus, I mean, like, if I, if they can actually get through my wall of 2,000 defenders or my gachi or whatever, it becomes kind of a problem. So, I mean, you know. Anyways, I use the bottomlesses. I don't even have extra warnings right now, and my warnings are in my deck that's over there. Um, so I just use the bottomless. It's, it's just as good, in my opinion. I mean, it can't stop things like Gores or Trigodia or whatever, but, I mean, it's still great for stopping things. If I were to play against a Rabbit matchup, this can remove their Cobazoles or their Saber Sources from play whenever they go for it. So, I mean, it's it's still a great card when they go to Exceed, Bottomless or whatever. And then we got our final staples. We got Mirror Force, Torrential, and Solemn Judgment. So that's the deck. Um, let me know what you guys think. It's It plays very well. I mean, it's dead drawn a couple times, but more often than not, it actually plays very, very well. Like I said, it's missing Treeborns, and me at least two. Um, if I can get those, I might change it up a little bit, put in another Tribute Monster or something, reduce some of the spells and traps or something, because, you know, it's whatever. Um, the Econs, they would be so much better if I had Treeborns and stuff in here. But yeah, the deck's pretty cool. I like playing with it for fun. Um, let me know what you guys think. Uh, let me know which deck you guys want me to actually profile next. And if you want the next deck, pro or deck profile, I need at least 10 likes on this video. So just let me know which one you guys want. The uh, TG deck, which is over there, and uh, my Karakuri deck, which is like on the other side of my room for some godforsaken reason. Um, just letting you guys know, my Karakuri deck is like way different from what everyone's using right now. It does not use neutrons, stuff like that, and it's actually very good. It explodes very, very... It, it uh, It's kind of like punching someone in the face over and over and over again and not showing any mercy. That's kind of how it plays. Um, so yeah, let me know which one you want me to do next, and to get the next deck, pro or deck profile, I need 10 likes on this video. Um, so rate, comment, and subscribe, and let me know what you guys think of this deck. Um, so yeah. Again, like the video, give it a thumbs up, you know, stuff like that. Bye, guys.